You're listening to the REI Marketing Nerds Podcast, the leading resource for real estate investors who want to dominate their market online. Dan Barrett is the founder of AdWords Nerds, a high-tech digital agency focusing exclusively on helping real estate investors like you get more leads and deals online, outsmart your competition, and live a freer, more awesome life. And now, your host, Dan Barrett. All right, hello, and I'm here with Chris Music from PS Buys Houses, which is Proud Start Buys Houses. I believe I have that correct. Ooh. All right, see, this has been a little while since I checked, but Chris, uh, you have been a long running client, really, really amazing to work with, extremely successful investor. So I'm super happy to have you on the show. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, I appreciate it, Dan. Thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to uh, chatting a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So let's, I want to talk a little bit about. There's something you have going on specifically, um, something you've been doing marketing wise. Um, I mentioned this before we jumped into the show, but I, I've kind of been starting off the show when I actually do an, a, an interview with an investor, just kind of catching up. So, like, you know, we're recording this in back half or the, the tail end really of 2021. Uh, 2020 was dramatic for a variety of reasons. So, catch me up a little bit. Like, how did you know, 2020, the pandemic, like what did that do to your market, to your business? How do you feel like you guys came through that? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, interesting year to say the least, you know, for myself, it definitely turned out to, to be a very good year. Um, you know, obviously when everything kind of started being very up in the air in, in March, uh, kind of leading into April as we kind of were just first getting hit with the stay at home, you know, shelter in place stuff. Mm. Uh, I know a lot of folks, in the Bay Area, and I assume, you know, throughout the country kind of pulled back on, on getting in new projects or uh, either stopped altogether or just, you know, created way wider margins than they thought they would need. I know a lot yeah. of my lenders kind of took a pause on things like that as well. But for me, I kind of just kept pushing forward. I uh, I did believe that, you know, ultimately we were going to still need places to live, homes need to be renovated, stuff like that. I mean, I try to be very mindful of a potential you know, drop in value, but I didn't put a complete pause on it. So, uh, you know, hindsight obviously worked out well because I continued to buy projects that would have worked had I lost 10 to 15% of value. We didn't do that. We actually continued to grow in value or gain value over that period. Yeah. All that being said, the projects uh, that were successful. Yeah, I was going to say, like, did you... So, you know, obviously now we're looking back, right, in hindsight, and we've been through this really massive rise in home values and everything. Did you guys early in that process, did you actually see a dip and then come out of it? Or did that kind of downturn that everybody else was afraid of, did that just kind of never happen in your market or kind of with the types of properties that you guys were buying? I didn't see any dip in actual prices, you know, as the ones we were selling kind of right there towards that, I guess you call it April may june time frame you know they kind of continue to sell according to to what the comps are at if not uh you know kind of already getting into that appreciation i think mainly it was because a lot of people who were going to sell their home were no longer selling their home so it was more of a supply uh forced appreciation which you know for me whatever the reason is is not as important as the fact that it's there so you know, being uh especially as well for us we were selling homes that were vacant so you know much easier to view that home if somebody's not living there concerned that you're going to walk in and contaminate you know where they live at right so that was a you know a big help for us is being selling a remodel home that was vacant just much more access to folks the people that were looking to buy were looking at our homes rather than trying to schedule you know a showing in the house that had kids that they couldn't get into right? so yeah i guess to mainly answer your question no we didn't see a dip at all um even in the very beginning there when a lot of people were thinking there was going to be something major happening yeah, that's fascinating. I mean, I was definitely one of those people that was sort of, I was girding for like, like I kept saying, like, you know, I know my my clients are real estate investors. And kind of like you said, we're always going to need a place to live, right? So real estate, real estate felt very safe to me. But then at the same time, I was always like, well, restaurants are like the safest business. I mean, any individual restaurant is like almost going out of business every day, but restaurants as a category are never going to go to business. And then, you know, it was like the whole world's like time turned upside down. So I was definitely one of those people. I find that really fascinating. So like, 
catch us up. So we right now, as we're recording this, it's October, it's 2021, right? You are in the Bay Area, which is one of these markets where, you know, the, the online marketing sort of ecosystem, it's obviously what I know, has always been super competitive. You're there in the heartland of big tech, right? Uh, an area where people have always felt really comfortable spending a lot of money. So what is your take on your market today? Is it is it different? Is it more extreme? Like what do you, when you look out at that landscape, what do you see? Uh, yeah, great question. I would say today it is, I'm going to use the term like more kind of more normalizing. Definitely, you know, throughout the, um, you know, second half of last year and, you know, maybe even the first quarter of this year, it, everything was kind of, I say it's going bonkers, but, you know, once again to that, supply concept a lot of people were trying to move especially from city centers to suburbs and they wanted to buy these homes that weren't really available but you know as we've kind of gotten further into this year i think sellers who were holding off on selling their homes have started to do so so there is more inventory i guess it's i heard i was reading something or heard a podcast the other day where they were saying that the rate of price appreciation has decreased. So it's not that it's not still increasing, right? <laughs> but it's not increasing as fast, right? So I think that kind of, in a nutshell, sums it up. Now, they thought that was cause to freak out and the market's going to crash. But I'm like, well, at the end of the day, it's still increasing. It's just not going off at 10% per month like it was, you know, at some points, which is obviously not sustainable. Right. Um, so it, it has, I guess, it's a equal, normalized a little bit, but still overall a strong. What I would consider seller's market, um, but obviously the Bay Area is, you know, not one market, right? It is there's so many different little pockets, just like a lot of areas are. I'd imagine they get lumped together. So there's some areas that are, you know, a little hot and others still, but you know that's to be expected. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting to me that we've been in this weird. I don't want to say bubble because bubble means a certain thing, right? When you talk about economics, but it's almost like we've been in this weird mental zone where we're all used to this like really wild price inflation. And now that it's starting to slow down, it, it, it's like people are worried, but it's kind of like, well, this was never what was happening before, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's, yeah, it's kind of interesting to watch people's reactions to that. And I always say like, that stuff is just over, I mean, it's beyond my, my uh, you know, my salary, right? It's like, it's, it's too much <laughs> for me personally, but it is kind of interesting as an observer to watch all that. So like, I, I'm curious because as a, so I'm in Connecticut, you're in California, right? As mm -hmm. someone who is outside of California and tries to pay attention to real estate trends and all this stuff, the trend that I, the sort of bigger meta narrative that always gets spun is people are leaving California. Big tech is moving out of California. We've had clients like in uh, places in Texas, right? And they say, well, housing prices here are super distorted because you know, Tesla is moving here, or, you know, some tech companies moving here and they're moving all their employees, right? And it sort of disrupts this like little town or whatever. So is that what it feels like or looks like to you inside California? Does it feel like, you know, everybody's moving out? Or is that just kind of like a media narrative that people like to point to because it tells a story, but it doesn't necessarily depict what's actually happening on the ground? Yeah, I mean, I I have heard of many people leaving the state. You know, I'm sure there's obviously actual stats on that but how it looks for me when i'm going to sell homes you know we still have a lot of people that are looking to buy homes in california you know, i get multiple offers a lot of homes sit the first weekend and they're gone so it's not at a point where you know prices are going down or homes are sitting hmm. so you know i don't know exactly how many folks are leaving i, I do know that's a real thing but uh, there are plenty enough people that are still staying in california that you know the houses are still going so yeah, as as I don't really care how many people are here. I mean, there's too many people here anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It might be good for some people to leave. That's kind of an issue. Uh, yeah, that's funny. But, I mean, the thing that I always try to, I guess, keep in mind and tell folks that, that ask me questions about the market or stuff like that, um, you know, other, you know, there's so many things you can do in real estate, but I know for me specifically, primarily what I do is flip home. And so right. I'm buying a home, holding for a little bit of time and selling it for a higher price in theory so i just care about the middle it doesn't matter to me if i bought it for 100 and sold it for two or if i bought it for a million and sold it for two million it's just it's whatever's in the middle 
Right. So as long as you can kind of understand that and kind of, I say forecast that or kind of understand that little piece of it, the absolute numbers don't mean anything. Yeah. So how many people live here are irrelevant as long as some homes still buying and selling for like and get those spread in the middle. So, you know, I don't get overly worked up about the market and things like that. I do pay attention to it. I do read reports, but you know, that's just not my, my business model, I guess, ultimately, you know? Well, it's also like that sort of meta sort of macro scale economic thing. It matters but the amount of times that it actually doesn't affect your day-to-day existence is it's most of the time, right? Like it's, you know, I've been saying like, there's this interesting thing happening now, like where we have all these shortages in the United States, we have these supply chain sort of jam ups, right? And then we have like labor shortage and literally a Starbucks by my house, which I go to every day, twice a day, because I'm an idiot and I'm going to pay all my money to the Starbucks corporation. But they're closed this afternoon. Like they closed at 11 because they were like, we just don't have anybody to work here. Like they just ran out of people, you know? So like that kind of thing is interesting to me, but like that broader scale, big level stuff, it doesn't always play the part in people's day-to-day lives that they're afraid it will. Which kind of brings me to my next question, which is, what, if anything, has changed about your marketing stack over this kind of like last year period? Because there were a lot of people who were jumping from the kind of thing to thing. There were tech changes that happened in Google and Facebook and Apple. Like There's, there's a lot of stuff happening. And I, I think a lot of investors even if they're doing direct mail, are worried that, you know, with the kind of market that they're in, um, you know, like you said, aggressive seller's market, nothing's working, you know, whatever. They're, they're just worried that, you know, that, that, that you know, hammer is going to fall. Want to find motivated seller leads online, but don't know where to start? Download our free motivated seller keyword report today. AdWords nerds have spent over $5 million this year researching the most profitable keywords for finding motivated seller leads. And you can grab these exact keywords when you download our report at www.adwordsnerds.com slash keywords. Right. So for you, just as kind of an overview have you changed much of what you've done marketing wise? Um, is it the same as it's ever been? What's been working for you lately? Uh, yeah, I mean, I personally haven't done a whole lot different with my marketing. I mean, you guys manage my on the online presence, my AdWords. So you may have changed some stuff. I mean, I'm not going with you too, <laughs> but to me, I'm still paying you to do what you do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, but you know. so you, but you, 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 know, you were you were investing in Google Ads before. You still are now, but like in in terms of the stuff that we don't really touch, like did you change much about? Do you do a lot of mail? I don't actually even know this. Do you? Do you uh, do- no, I, I don't. Uh, it's something that I have done in the past. Uh, I used to do it predominantly, and then um, obviously, kind of around the time when I started working with you guys, I uh, just had this shift in. You know, thought was like, hey, I mean, the mail is cool. And if you, you know, you work it, you will find things there. But it just made more sense fundamentally to go after people who were looking for me rather than I was looking for them. Because in yeah. mail, it was you mail them and then they respond if they want. Well, in other words, they initiate the con- contact. So it's kind of, you know, one would think a little bit of a warmer intro they can't yell at you if they reached out to you i mean they still do sometimes but, well they should they still know. do sometimes yeah but, uh, <laughs> it's not, and i just you know i just obviously this was a handful of years ago and i just thought hey you know we're going to be can you continue to become more and more online yeah. world mail is kind of not as important or relevant to people as it once was so you know i kind of just shifted more of my marketing to that. And so I, I phased out the mail. I, you know, I was always just looking at the the metrics and I just got a better return on, on the online stuff with you guys. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't do mail. I mean, aside from online uh, with the SC, I mean, with the, uh, you know, pay-per-click, I, uh, it's just a lot of like kind of face-to-face. I know wholesalers, I know the people, you know, in the industry, you know, when you're around long enough, you just make connections and, you know, we yeah. kind of just, things off to each other in, in that way, um, different agents, you know, stuff like that. Nothing uh, wildly crazy. I will say, so we did a, a redesign on your website. And so for people that are listening to this, you want to go check out the site. It's at psbuyshouses.com. 
buyshouses.com. So P as in Paul, S buyshouses.com. P S stands for proud start, right? And so I'm actually looking at the site right now. We, we kind of rebuilt this from scratch. Um, and I really like it. By the way, I really like how it looks. I, I like it loads really fast. It looks quite good. And I, I know we spent a fair amount of time on the copy and everything. What kind of initially made you want to get into redesigning the site? Because you'd had the same website for a long, a pretty long time, right? Since since we uh, yeah. worked together. Well, that was, I mean, that's the only website I've had. And, uh, you know, I had put that together on, on Wix, um, you know, when I first started doing this real estate thing, I guess in 2010, you know, I had to do it myself. Obviously, didn't have the financial capability to hire somebody to do it, or at least didn't want to spend what I had to do that. But uh, no, I mean, initially, oh, why? Oh, because I wanted, uh, for some reason, I don't know why if this is actually a little thing or not, but I, in my head, is I want to be at the top of the Google organic search because I feel like that's going to one add validity to my business as well as generate leads in some fashion. You know, anybody Googles things, there's the ads. And then obviously there's, you know, usually a map or something with some businesses. And then there's like just a general organic feed. Yep. And uh, I just wasn't happy with where I was finding myself on a few different terms. You know, I had been working with an SEO person for a while and it just never quite got to where I wanted to be. Um, and then obviously you guys had started uh, offering an SEO service or, you know, a little different SEO service than maybe before. So we had had a conversation about it and we're like, well, we could do this, but if you don't change your website, then it's kind of be off or not. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, if, if that's, you know, we got to go back to then move forward. I mean, I guess that's that's what we got to do. Um, yeah. So that was kind of the, the impetus of, of the redesign. Um, and yeah, I mean, it definitely looks a lot better now. It's a lot cleaner. You know, all that stuff for me is kind of, you know, it's more about getting the result in the end. but. To yeah. your point, if it's not built correctly, the foundation's not there, then you can play with it all you want, right? It's just not going to get to where it's got to get. So Yeah. And I actually think, you know, to kind of go back to the beginning of your story, right? It makes sense if you are just starting out to build your own site a lot of the time, right? Whether that's you're using Investor Carrot or something like Wix, or actually there's a lot of a lot of website builders out today were way more than there were even four or five years ago, right? Like there's just a ton of them in there. They all tend to be pretty good, right? So Wix is kind of the bane of my existence and has been for a long time, but that's not, you know, that's a, it's just, it made sense for where you were at. And then, you know, like you said, it wasn't like you were scraping together your last penny to pay for a graphical update for the site, right? It made sense in terms of your broader strategy, what you wanted to do for SEO, so yeah, I, mean, I think it looks really good. And again, people should go check it out, psbuyshouses.com. We actually baked a lot of conversion rate optimization stuff into the site, stuff that we saw in landing page testing that we knew was going to work better. So it's kind of a good site to go and check out. So as you kind of move through to 2022, which by the way, even as I say that out loud, seems absolutely insane to me that it's going to be 2022 already <laughs> because literally i just remember being like 2020 is over and that felt like two days ago mm -hmm. um you're going into 2022 do you have like big goals and you want to grow is it you know is this a lifestyle business for you where you're like it's more about the amount of time that i'm spending like what are you trying to do as you go into the next year um, and it could be big or small or nothing at all, but I'm curious, like, what your kind of trajectory is in in your head. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Uh, obviously, it's always good to kind of have a a thought or an idea of where you want to be moving. In regards to this specific, I guess, aspect of real estate, you know, obviously, predominantly, your service provides me leads of people that want to sell homes. I could take that and buy those to flip them. I could wholesale them. I could buy them and use them as rentals, whatever, right? Just people that want to sell properties. I primarily have used it to purchase properties and then flip them. So in regards to that, I kind of think that I'm good with where this is at. You know, I do, I don't know, anywhere from 25 to 30 flips a year. That works out well for me. And it's a system that I have in place. It doesn't take a whole lot of my time at this point. Yeah. And so now I kind of use the extra time to do other things, uh, I'm getting into development, uh, a couple of a buddy of mine, we bought a lot over in Hayward, if anybody knows the Bay Area, that we're going to build an apartment building on that. Wow, cool. 
That's awesome. Is that the first that you've done, like a big multifamily development like that, or do you have? Uh, yeah. So I mean, some of the projects we we, we built, you know, single family homes, tore them down and rebuild them. But this is obviously a different space. You know, a lot more. You know, different parts and pieces to it. So I was, you know, I guess with anything, once you kind of got it figured out, it's cool to kind of keep challenging yourself into, you know, other ways. I don't know if you want to call it leveling up or whatever, but. So that's kind of, you know, what we've been working on a lot this year and that'll be for the next couple of years as that thing comes together. So we'll see if we like it, you know, maybe continue down that path, going to start jumping. I'm going to jump into the senior uh, residential care facilities for the elderly. Mm. Um, that I think something is going to be, uh, you know, very much in demand as we you know move forward here. Yeah. And uh, my, you know, my mom is retiring and has a particular passion for the elderly. So this will be a cool little thing for her to kind of participate in as well. You said your so this, mom? You know, uh, yeah, my, my mom. Um, oh, cool. She's going to be next year. And she needs something to do, basically. She's kind of freaking out about, you know, <laughs> going, working forever to have nothing to going on. So, yeah, yeah. My mom's retired like three years. And she, at, in the beginning, she was panicked. And now it's like, I feel like she's just so, she's in such a relaxed mode that I can't get her to do anything at all. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. So you guys are going to kind of partner a little bit, not partner, but like kind of team up on that project. Uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, I'll, I'll have some some responsibilities for her so she can, you know, have something to do as part of her day. Now, yeah. like, like to your point, I'm sure she'll find she's way busier than she thinks she's going to be, which is her normal stuff. But, you know, if there's somebody who's worked the last 40 years, it's kind of scary to know you're not going to have anything, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's an investment for me and our family, but obviously a cool little thing for her to kind of work on since she is passionate about, you know, caring for the elderly. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, to the answer to the question, you know, the main line of flipping is kind of kind of stay similar, but dedicating more time doing some of these, I guess, side projects or different kind of avenues of, of real estate to kind of keep it a little not that interesting, but, you know, just learning more stuff, right? Yeah. Well, that keeps it interesting too, right? It's like, you can do the same thing over and over and it just gets boring. At least for me, like I kind of always need to change. I think that's awesome. I, I think the retirement facility thing is, I mean, it's like, obviously, you know this, right? But it's like just the the demographic shift that's happening where we're living longer and longer and we're not, you know, we're working the same amount and then we're living longer and longer after that. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I think that's such a cool kind of area to be in. That's super exciting for people that want to kind of follow up with you. Obviously we've talked about the website, psbicehouses.com. Is that the best place to kind of check out what you're doing? Is there anything else that you want to promote or put out there? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously that's my website. You know, I mean, that's obviously primarily a website for folks who are interested in selling houses, you know, so if you have a house you want to sell, <laughs> don't be to reach out through that. Um, Hit them up. Outside of that, I mean, I don't, I don't really have any of the, the social media stuff. I have my email, you know, if you want to throw that out to folks. I'm not just going to give my phone number, obviously. So, no, you know, no, no. The email, I won't even give you your email. I will, what I will say is if you are, if you are interested, go to psbicehouses.com. You can you get in touch with Chris, I'm sure, that way. Oh, yeah. If you put in a little web form, it goes to my acquisitions lady. But, you know, she'll shoot it over to me. But, you know, like I said, the email is fine. But, yeah, I, I just, I've never really been big on the social media stuff. So I don't know how to do all that. It's probably why you flip so many homes, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. It's all a waste of time. Realistic. To each their own. I mean, I do know a lot of folks that are using that for their business and doing well. It just never been my thing. So, you know. I just... No, I mean, yeah. And I, and I kid, we actually, we launched a social media service for real estate investors that's been doing well. So I'm actually all for real social media. But for me, and I'm on social media all the time. Yeah, you know, this is kind of like that, right? But I had to delete it off my phone. I couldn't. I couldn't handle it. Yeah, I was yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. you get stuck on there. So uh, go down some rabbit holes looking at that stuff. All right. Well, look, when Chris gets a TikTok, I will let everybody know and appreciate <laughs> everybody that address. But for the short term, like I said, go check out Chris and what he is doing. It's Proud Start Real Estate Solutions. That is P as in Paul, P S buys houses.com. Chris Music, thank you so much for being here, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your experience with everybody. It's it's awesome. Yeah, man. I'm, I appreciate you having me on um, and thinking that what I had to say has value to somebody. I hope it does. And uh, you know, if anybody wants to connect, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to you know, shoot the shit about this. It's what we do. So. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I'll talk to you very soon. This is the podcastfactory.com.